All right, haven't done uh, ETF update last week because let's just face it, right? Everyone was in the dumps, everyone's depressed, everyone's trying to think Bitcoin ETFs are over, everyone is sitting out here going, oh, the price is so boring, even though we're sitting at 69,273. What the f what more do people want, right? Let's have a look at what's happened over the last couple of weeks. So, over the last couple of weeks, the ETFs have added 19,416. Bitcoin over 10 trading sessions. That is 1,941 Bitcoin per trading session in the last two weeks. Just to put that into perspective, there's only 900 Bitcoin a day being mined. On top of that, we've now got the Genesis uh, lawsuit, bankruptcy, whatever. It's finished now, right? Uh, there's probably going to be more bit people selling uh, their GBTC because remember, there's still 322,000 Bitcoin inside of GBTC. And the only thing that can really stop that bleed, you know, at least pacify it a little bit, is going to be GBTC lowering their fees, which I believe is coming soon at some point, once they get to a point of going, okay, we should probably lower our fees and maintain the amount of Bitcoin that we got at this point. I don't think they're going to lower them as, as drastically as what people think, but you don't even need to. You're only going to lower it enough to make people go, okay, I don't need to sell my position at, at this point. So, you know, there's a lot of good things happening here, but everyone is just focused on the fact that the price is sort of staying where it's at. And you've got to remember, the, bu the smart buyers start getting excited when there is a differential between price versus value. And the value of Bitcoin has gone through the roof. And as we approach the halving, which we're less than two weeks away from the halving, it's, the value is going up. Right. So if this just this trend of, of 1,941 down from 3,000 a day goes continues on within two weeks, they're not buying double the supply. They're buying four times the supply of, of Bitcoin on a daily basis. So everything is extremely healthy right now. Everything is moving according to plan. And I think that everyone's been spoiled with an all time high before the halving. And so. If we look at every other previous cycle, we'd have been sitting here and everyone would just have to wait like you should, like you deserve to, right? All I'm hearing is from newbie people coming into the market. Oh my God, the price needs to do something. The price, price doesn't need to do anything. In fact, I would be a lot happier if the price went down to the 40s. Touch, just touched 48, 49. I want to see everyone who's new into the game squirm. Because that's what a normal price movement in a bear market should be, right? It should be 30, 35%, something like that. Um, and I think that would be really healthy for Bitcoin at this point. I want to see as much Bitcoin as possible be sucked up by the BlackRock boys. Because one thing you do know is that there are entities, there are, there are jurisdictions even that are going to be buying through the ETFs that are never, ever going to sell. This Bitcoin is never, ever going to see the light of day. What you're seeing right now is people who bought Bitcoin early have become multi-millionaires, if not 100 millionaires, that are now selling because they've got to buy a house, they've got to take care of their family, blah, blah, blah. But who are they selling to? They're selling to people who have had the houses, had the holiday homes, had the cars, had the investment portfolios, been worth hundreds of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars forever. And all they're doing now is looking for opportunities to grow their wealth and part of their portfolio. Now, the difference is a part of their portfolio is, you know, 2,000 Bitcoin a day, right? And it's this collective that's coming in now. You know, so the buyer rotation that continues to happen here is absolutely phenomenal. And I think it should continue. The, the more of the buyers who are ready to sell that we get out now versus at 100,000, the higher this rocket ship goes and the faster it goes because there won't be any sell pressure, sell pressure coming into the market. Now, GBTC is interesting. I was a GBTC holder for a very, very long time. Uh, and I think they, they did a phenomenal job with the ETF and fighting for the rights of, of investors to have an ETF. Um, but at this point, I don't know. I think, there's, I think there is a, a, a damaging element to what's going on to this market because they're not lowering their fees. Now, from a competition perspective, it's great because it allows BlackRock 
you know, I had this uh, idea that I think BlackRock would basically buy out Grayscale, right, and just roll it into their iShares product. Um, and I don't, you know, thinking about it now, it's like, why would you do that? Why not just let them be stupid enough and keep the fees high enough and just drain the Bitcoin? Because here's the difference. BlackRock is playing a 100 to 200 year game and Grayscale is trying to maintain its fees. Right. Uh, and that's a different. These are two different polar opposite games that are being played here by these two companies. BlackRock is not trying to find an exit. BlackRock is not trying to maintain fees right now, right? They're going to make a lot of money in the future. But right now, all their job is, because they know how Bitcoin works, is to get as much Bitcoin into the fund as possible. So the ETFs are acquiring 1,941.6 Bitcoin per trading session for the last two weeks. And I think this trend is due to accelerate. Now, if you're not following me on Twitter, then every Friday I put out a tweet and I say, Bitcoin price, it's probably going to be highly unlikely that it sustains a price above this level and below this level. And again, this week, it looks like I'm about to nail it, even though my haters were out praying against it when we broke above 70,000. Uh, and of course, they're wrong. So um, I think we're about to stick right on the levels that I mentioned. And, uh, you know, it is, it is what it is. This game right now... The hardest thing to do when you're entering this period of a bull run um, is basically do nothing, right? You want to sit on your hands and do nothing. That doesn't mean you don't work to get more Bitcoin. I'm talking about with the Bitcoin portfolio because people are going to be tempted to, you know, do all kinds of crazy shit, right? Uh, maybe I put a little bit over here. Maybe I put a little bit over there. Maybe I'll do this. Maybe I'll do that. And then one day you're going to wake up and Bitcoin's going to be a green rocket, um, and then you're going to miss out because all this other stuff is going to fall apart. If you haven't realized how all this other stuff is falling apart, then just have a look at the Ethereum Bitcoin chart, right? Ethereum valued in Bitcoin. And you can see that Bitcoin is the hardest store of value asset known to mankind. And people are starting to fuck around with it. And guess what's going on, right? It's falling to the ground. Gravity is pulling it to zero. Uh, against against Bitcoin. That's exactly what should be happening against the hardest money humanity has ever created. So on that note, I want you to realize that your time, you know, is running out here, right? We're about to price out low single digit millionaires in this cycle. Uh, and I'm talking about the most risk, the most pro risk uh, single low single digit millionaires are about to get priced out because as soon as we go past, if, if Bitcoin goes past $100,000, for the average person who's got, let's say, a three or four million dollar property portfolio, you're not going to have a hundred thousand dollars lying around to put into something that you just learned about. So you need to focus. You need to learn. You need got. You got. Time is running out here faster than anyone could have imagined, including myself. Right? I thought maybe we'll hit a hundred thousand dollars towards the end of the year, but it's happening now. Right? It's happening now close to the halving. We're in April. It's the 7th of April. And I still have my, my, my call uh, where I, I said I think we're going to cross $100,000 by May 7th. So we'll see whether that happens or not. And by the way, if it happens by May 14th, I'm still going to claim that I was right. And if you think I was wrong because it was seven days later, that's up to you and you don't understand anything. So um, yeah, this is, this is looking really healthy it's looking really good, and I think this week may be, we may have another week to wait before we start uh, climbing again, but I think we're, we're at a possibility where this week is the week where we start heading up again. So get your shit together, get as much Bitcoin as you can under the belt. If you haven't gotten to one Bitcoin yet, your time is running out. Get to one Bitcoin as fast as humanly possible. You don't know who's on the other side of this market scooping up all of this Bitcoin. It could be a nation state. It could be wealthy families. It, it could be anyone that's buying up this Bitcoin. And I think one of the smartest things, I was thinking about this, one of the smartest things any nation who wanted to empower its citizens, right? Think about this. Imagine if the moment a baby is born, right, you put as a nation state 50% of a year's minimum wage in Bitcoin as a pension uh, for that baby, and they can draw on it after they're 35 years old. Imagine how much ownership that would give someone into a country 
um, that they can draw on. I think you would deal with, you know, the welfare crisis all around the world uh, within, you know, 20 to, 30, 20 to 40 years. You wouldn't have a welfare crisis anymore if you just printed that money up front. You print your money anyway. Might as well print it up front, you know, 50% of whatever the, year, whatever the yearly base wage is, put it into a, a trust or a pension, and after someone's 35, they can draw against it. That would super empower people to be patriotic, love their country, be, have an ownership stake in their country. Uh, and these are just ideas that, you know, people are going to be thinking about. President Bukele just announced yesterday they're going to give away 5,000 citizenships, uh, which is 0.1% of their population, for people who have special skills, special degrees, special, special, something special, right? Genius move, right? That's bringing intellectual property, capital to the country um, of El Salvador. You know, why can't the UAE, which has, you know, a basic pension fund for its Emirati citizens, which is 10% of the population of the UAE, start buying up Bitcoin for their citizens, right? That their citizens can draw on at any point uh, after a, you know, a 20 to 30 year hold, right? Any nation who wants a powerful citizenry can do that. And it makes complete sense because you print the fucking money anyway, you might as well print it and buy the hardest asset humanity has ever known and take care of your citizens and not have a welfare problem in the future. So again, all of this is happening. All of this is happening right now. I know it's been boring to look at the price go sideways, but this is normal, right? Bitcoin is going to shock in short periods of time, and then it's going to be normal sideways for, for, for an extended period, right? So a lot of exciting things are happening, but ultimately, you need to get to your one Bitcoin. And by the way, if you want to stay in touch after I leave social media, look at the description of the video. You can figure that out. Uh, so we can stay in touch. It's only for people who have more than one Bitcoin, because if you haven't got to one Bitcoin, your life's mission, purpose, drive, and only thing you should focus on is getting to one Bitcoin. Um, but yeah, check that out in the description. Ultimately, there are always only three rules to Bitcoin. Step number one, you buy Bitcoin. Step number two, you shut the fuck up. And step number three, you get fabulously wealthy.